What's up, peeps? What up, peeps? How y'all doing today? Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about crime. Crime is a subject that I think all of us can relate to in one way or another, whether you're a criminal yourself or a victim of crime. I suppose, in retrospect, every one of us is probably a criminal if you've downloaded a song illegally or recorded a mixtape back in the 80s. You broke the law, but we always bend the rules, bending the rules according to what we think to be suitable. But crime, at a certain point, becomes something we all pay for. And this is a multifaceted discussion here, and I'm hoping I can cover all the points I wanted to cover. There's a series going on. First off, I want to say, is crime bad in your neighborhood? This depends on where you live. I live near Portland. I grew up in the Portland area my whole life. When I was younger, teenager, I'd travel down there on the bus and we'd hang out and buy substances on the streets. And back then it was a cesspool. It was bad. The crime was bad. There were skinheads everywhere, a lot of violence, and it actually cleaned up. The crime rate went down significantly in a lot of cities over the last several decades. The younger generation may think that the crime rate right now is just out of hand but it's actually been much, much worse. Just like when we talk about the world being polluted and how our cities are polluted and the waterways are polluted, people have no idea until you look back at history. Back in the early 1900s here in the Willamette Valley, the Willamette River was basically just a sewage dump for not just crap, but factories, w mills, everything else. Eventually we learned our lesson and cleaned it up, but still at some point the pollution gets overwhelming again. The same thing is happening with not just homelessness, but crime as well, and often they go hand in hand, and I'm not going to sweep all homeless people under the same rug because I have a strong soft spot in my heart for the homeless and those who are suffering from having, or houseless if you will, uh, because it's becoming so much more pronounced because of the circumstances we are in right now. And this goes way back, way back beyond 2008 and the crisis, and this is something that's going to continue to get worse. It's not going to improve, and I see it as a very dangerous point in time that we were at right now, which is why I'm talking about this. Now, when I talk about crime, I'm talking about two different types of crime. You may see, I'm sure anyone one who's watched the news has seen the organized robberies like 80 people hitting Nordstrom's at once, parking all their cars in the middle of the street. This just happened, I think, yesterday. This has been going on at Gucci stores, all different types of high-end retailers. Now, look, I understand that those things are insured, and I know that they're overpriced. And part of me says, well, screw, screw the trendy brands. But another part of me also, the rational part of me says, no, it's not right. It's somebody else's property. It doesn't matter what your rationale is. Now, I have also a soft spot in my heart for, say, protesters. Some people have called me out by saying, oh, last year you were supporting BLM and riots. I think I was misunderstood in the sense that what I was saying is when people have a right to protest, it, it's, it's a, a given constitutional right to protest your grievances in this country. It's in the First Amendment. And beyond that, if you start torching businesses, that's a big problem. But also, it seems that lighting fires, causing problems, creating disturbances is often the only way to get attention of the authorities or the attention of the people to share in what's going on. But unfortunately, it becomes a mob mentality. And all of this happened during a pandemic, which people feel frustrated, left out. So there's a series on... I think it's KGW in Portland, our local news station. It's called Is Portland Over? They've been covering this for quite a while, and it's just a sad title, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I made a video the other day while I was down there, just of some of the homeless in the Pearl District and down by Chinatown, as I was going to see my son play a show down there. And um, the crime rates in the city are going up significantly. A lot of people want to blame it on the defunding the police. And I want to make it very clear that I've never been opposed to police, but I, hon I honestly uh, have looked at the police budgets and seen what they spend their money on. And most of the crimes 
go unsolved. This is something people don't realize. A lot of homicides are solved, but a lot more aren't uh, as far as robberies, uh, petty crimes, car theft. And look, I've been a victim of crime in my neighborhood, okay? And I've had my car stolen out of my driveway twice. I, we've had creepers around our neighborhood digging through people's stuff. It's, it's getting worse. And now there's a homeless encampment down the street. And I have mixed feelings because I empathize with those who have lost their homes. But I also know that it invites in crime and drugs. I went down there myself and picked up dozens of needles out of this one little spot behind this tree where somebody must just go shoot up every day. Uh, the same spot, just needles, just it'd been going on forever. They were buried underneath the bark dust and it was so absurd and it pisses me off because I have kids, kids that wander the neighborhood. When I go to my local park and I see needles there, that's unfucking acceptable you know? And I think all of us can agree. So in Portland, for example, a lot of the people who live there, yeah, it's a liberal city, and people will say as much. They say, I, I empathize with folks, but when you move into my street and you line my whole street with camper vans and set up tents and fights break out and my kids feel afraid to walk down the street, that's a problem. You do have the right to defend your neighborhood, your community, and that's where we're at right now. A very difficult point to where some are saying, no, it's public property. Yeah, it's public property. I've lived in my house for 17 years. I pay taxes here. I pay into the school system, so I expect decent schools. I pay into the police, the fire department. I expect responses, but I also expect laws and legislation to be passed that's actually beneficial. Now, we've had what in, I live in Vancouver, Washington, but over across the bridge, we've had 77 dead uh, out of 1,100 shootings this year already. It's absolutely out of hand. Car thefts are in the highest range. Um, uh, crime and robberies, actually, most of the states that have the highest crime rates and robberies are down in the south, Mississippi, I think, Kansas, a bunch of places, except Washington on the west coast. Um, and our I've watched this happen, our neighborhood, we follow our neighborhood group, and I've seen my wife constantly telling me about this person saw these people again, that those same ones that stole our car a month ago and thrashed it and left it somewhere, and uh, we got it back, but it's trashed, you know. Um, so this brings me to uh, how difficult this is, like, as far as... I want you to picture something. You're sitting in your home. I'm sitting here making a video on YouTube, doing whatever, cleaning up, and all of a sudden I hear a loud sound in my house. I know nobody's home. I go and open the door, and there's two guys standing there with masks on at gunpoint, and they tie my family and I up and rob my house. Now this happens so often, and I have all the statistics I'd like to read to you, there's a lot, a lot, millions of burglaries every year and a, so many home invasions, you'd be surprised. Until it happens to you, you don't think much about it. It's never happened to me yet, but I think about it. I have a home security system, I keep my door locked, I try to be as cautious as possible, and I'm more than willing to protect myself if I feel the need. So let me get into this. What is self-defense? right? If somebody breaks into my home and they threaten my family, I have no problem laying somebody out. If, if I had to end a life, it would be a horrible thing. I would not want to do that. Who would? Well, a lot of people. There are some crazy motherfuckers out there who want nothing more than to harm others, and they're always looking for, you know, the itchy tr trigger finger. I'm not one of those people. I would never want to harm someone. I'd do everything I could not to, but the idea that we feel protected until something happens. If you've ever had a car stolen, you know the cops don't do anything. You get a phone call from the tow yard. A lot of folks don't realize this. If your car gets stolen and you report it stolen, the cops will call you and say, oh yeah, it's here and we towed it to this tow yard. You'll go to that tow yard and you'll pay at least 350, 400 bucks or more to get it out, okay? No matter what, you pay that fee. Now, then you find out that it's the most corrupt tow yard in the entire city and that they work with the police departments and that the police departments get kickbacks by, you know, using certain tow companies just like businesses do. 
And the people start to get suspicious. You know, they start to get angry. They're like, well, if the police can't stop something, why shouldn't we take it into our own hands? And that's exactly where we're at right now. The old vigilante justice. And I suppose to even bring that up instantly is probably going to trigger in a lot of people's minds the current case of what just happened with the guy that got released who, uh, who acted in self-defense against people during last year's riots. I'm not going to go into that case. I made it a point not to follow it. But all I can say is this. It doesn't set a precedent for anything other than if somebody's coming at you, you have the right to shoot them. Unfortunately, that's always been in law. And a lot of people think that, let's just say people who are pro-gun control. I've always been a little bit wary of the way that people are so pro-gun and they want to be able to have anything they want. And I'll often ask people, well, okay, you want to talk about how many rounds you can have in a clip, whatever it might be. Do you believe that humans, that, or that American Americans, let's say, should be able to own bazookas? And people might say, well, maybe. Well, sure, in some places you can. It is legal to own a flamethrower in most places, by the way. Um, but let's just say that you want to own a nuke. Well, then we get into people going, well, maybe not. Maybe people shouldn't have bombs because others could be harmed. And then we get to a certain level where there is a threshold of freedom, where we're willing to sacrifice not having certain things or access to certain things in order to make a safer society. But when it comes to general firearms, they're never going away in America. There's no way Americans are going to give that up. And that's kind of been a talking point in politics for so long, they're going to take our guns, and it just, it doesn't happen, and it won't happen, and it can't happen, because in America, there is a lot of crime, and it is a deterrent to be able to use a firearm to protect yourself. You know, I, I, I'm honestly surprised with the, the degree to some people will go to say, we don't need this, we don't need this. In the last couple of years, a lot of people, a lot more, quote, liberal-minded people have gone in and said, well, I never thought I'd go in and buy myself a firearm, but it happens all the time. People realize that the cops aren't there to protect you. They're there to react after the fact, and that's no offense to police. They do the best often with what they have, but we need to do better as citizens. And when there's people out there that have no respect for life or property, and I want to make a side note, this includes those shit bags down in Portland with black hoods on, claiming to be Antifa, breaking out windows in the Natural History Museum, trying to, you know, eliminate some version of history that they disagree with, and, and destroying statues. At some point, it becomes ridiculous. And um, I, I don't agree with those things. I don't agree with destroying property for the sake of trying to make some point when you're attacking people, you're attacking the media, you're attacking police, you're attacking everyone else. And there is an interesting kind of paradox in Portland with being, you know, proud of being a liberal city, which in that case, they're unable to react to the actual crimes going on. And uh, it's a fascinating thing. I mean, watching it from the inside as well as the outside. I went down there and I watched a lot of this happen. But... Uh, I found it pretty disgusting that people are willing to fall into one camp or the other. I've spoken to more people than I can imagine that, <laughs> that say, well, you've got to pick a side, or you've got to be for or against this. And no, you, you really don't. You've got to think things through. It's very complicated. All of it is. But when people have no respect for life or property, and when people steal from those who are poor already, <laughs> you know, it really rubs me the wrong way. And <clears throat> a lot of these criminals are just trying to fund their drug habits. In fact, I believe it's, they said it was up to 88%, but really it was, I believe, 51%. And the other 37% just admitted that later it would go to buy drugs one way or another. Doesn't mean they would use it for drugs, but um, this is why I'm, I've always been for legalization full de decriminalization of all drugs. But that's for another story. <laughs> um, it's very difficult when to know what to do. You break up, a, for example, a homeless camp, you're not going to solve the crime problem. 
It's not always people who are living in these camps. It's just a few bad apples, but they're able to blend in. But a lot more of these people are just neighbors. They have homes. They're not just the homeless camps that are causing all the crime. There are people who live in our own neighborhood who are probably walking around and casing people's homes. And, you know, it's funny because where's Batman, you know? It's funny how Americans, it, you know, I guess worldwide, people in general, have this kind of fascination and obsession with the hero, the one who's going to step in and do what the cops can't do. It's ingrained within not just our culture because of the movies, but in our brains. It's, it's something we like seeing justice. Now, I can't say this for everyone, but I know a majority of people I've talked to, when I really get right down to it and get them to admit it, they love seeing people get instant karma. A perfect example is, you know, some guy who slams on some dude's car and like threatens him and then he's walking off staring and he hits a pole, right? And he just kind of, and then he kind of runs up to the car like, you want to go? Like he doesn't know what to do because he hurt himself. And this kind of something that small all the way up to somebody who's a mass murderer and watching them be annihilated by lethal injection or whatever it may be, even though I'm opposed to the death penalty, there's still something about seeing somebody get theirs. It's very difficult to navigate being a human, if you know what I mean. So, another example of this would be the hackers out there. You know, you would think, uh, the anonymous, where are the heroes? Where are they to transfer wealth to other people's pockets? Or to do something that's really going to benefit? There's one place that online sleuths have actually done some real, you know, while the hackers have gone out and just fucked with people, we've got, or uh, some of them have actually exposed, like, real information, like corruption within the governments. That's where the goodness lies. But also, just the small sleuths who go on there and they get the pedos, especially popular in Europe, where they go on and they pose as a teenager and they lure somebody in and then they, you know, work with the cops. In some jurisdictions, they have a 100% of their arrests on the pedos are from these people who just work for free from their computers at home. That's justice. Those are the Batman, you know, the, the Superman. These are the people who are actually making a difference because they're getting these slime balls off the street. But that's a whole different story. Uh, pedos have a totally different interest than those who are out there actually stealing from you and actively looking to steal from anyone. And um, so when they steal, they get out the next day. It's an important thing that people need to realize. Getting someone caught means nothing. Usually after someone steals a car or what they call the, the, the or, or robs something or whatever it might be, it's what they call the something rate, the, the rescind rate, recovery rate, whatever it is. Um, clearance rate. The clearance rate for crimes sometimes is, is as low as like 3%. Most people never get busted. There was a recent uh, mass sweep of a homeless camp in Seattle just the other day. It was in our local news. My wife says, yeah, they found 40 stolen cars in this one camp. 40 cars. The cops know they're there. So the idea that they're, you know, that they're doing their job it should make people wake up to the fact that they're going to need to navigate their own their own neighborhoods and their own protection. Should we be able to shoot rioters, looters? That's a question people ask. Should we be able to shoot a home invader even? If you shoot somebody who's unarmed, you know, are they uh, are you liable for that? And in some cases you are. You have to have an equal use of force, but there are exceptions if you're protecting your family or if somebody breaks into your home. But um the, the important point to remember here is that most of these people who get busted for robbing, stealing, breaking, taking your car, whatever it might be, they get out the next day. And there really is not a solution that can be called upon. You can have as many cops as you want on the street, but if they're only stopping, if they're only busting people after the fact or investigating crimes, you're not going to solve the bigger problem that we have no room in the jails for people. And even if we did, our jails are overflowing. Once again, I refer you back to eliminate drug laws, let people out of jail for drug crimes. 
completely eliminate anyone who's in jail just for drugs or nonviolent crimes, let them out and move in all the pervs because they're letting out all kinds of freaks. And it's just, you know, the bail that's set for people is ridiculous. I've been there, I know. It was just for weed and my bail was like $250,000. And I see these guys who go in for like almost running people down and their bail's a thousand bucks. The justice system's definitely broken and we all suffer. When I was younger, I remember driving by like farmers, you know, uh, gates to people's properties, you know, when I'd go out in the country, go camping, whatever it might be. You see a sign that says something like, you know, we'll shoot ask, and ask questions later, or, you know, uh, trespassers will be shot. And I remember thinking, oh God, that's vile. Why, why aren't people more peaceful? It reminds me of the old signs signs everywhere signs you know and you think about like well no if you get on my property i'm gonna fuck you up too i can't help it i have a family to protect if a random stranger is wandering over my fence onto my property i gotta know what their interests are and that's because there are a lot of scumbags out there and not everybody has good interests and it takes a long time to be able to read that in uh, in people but you know, there was an old sign while I'm on that note that there was a dumpster at Bagby Hot Springs. It's a place we used to go, and you'd have to hike about two, three miles up to the hot springs. And then they have these old wooden tubs, and they're awesome. Great place to go. We'd, you know, hike up to these tubs and come back, and you'd see broken glass when you got in there. Cars were broken in there all the time because they knew people were up in the tubs taking whatever, drinking, partying, and that they wouldn't be down for hours. So they'd break into cars, they'd take their shit, and they'd take off. And so there was this stenciled, spray-painted thing across the dumpster that said, Shoot Thief. And it was there for, like, years and years. I don't know, it's probably still there. Nobody removed it or messed with it. And I used to think, oh, that's a little brutal for just theft. We came back down one night, and my friend had his seat, his brand-new Recaro car seats. They were like custom seats for his truck, and they were stolen along with all the shit in his glove box and everything else. And I remember us driving home with just... They'd left him his driver's seat. They were kind enough to do that. I don't know why. Uh, but, yeah, I remember thinking, wow, you know, here you are, a victim of the same shit that you hear from everyone else, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know? I remember a story of a guy who electrified the handles on his <laughs> Mustang. He had some vintage car and that. I don't even recall if this was an urban legend at this point, but uh, he came out to his car after shopping and there was a guy laying there, you know, on the ground, unconscious. He'd pissed his pants because, you know, when he pulled on the handle, it electrified him. Well, that's obviously a bad idea. I walked out and grabbed onto the wrong truck handle the other day. Thought it was my son's pickup. I'm like, oh, wait, there's another one that looks the same. But, uh, you know, you want to be careful. You don't want to hurt people, innocent people. It's just like not shooting bystanders, but you want the thieves to pay. When they stole our catalytic converter, you know, the other day, it was like, now it's just loud again. I keep trying to fix the muffler. I'm like, here I am putting all these hours into trying to fix my car because some assholes took it and took advantage of it, you know. So anyway, vigilante justice is extremely complex. Um, but if the cops don't deal with it, and they can't deal with it, as it happens, the people really need to take it into their own hands. And so I'll give you some statistics here. Um, and just remember, the biggest crim criminals still wear suits and ties. <laughs> it's important to remember, there are also police gangs in California with, like, tattoos of, like, you know, skulls with, like, Nazi helmets on and shit. There, there are actual police gangs where, you know, they take oaths within their gang. And it, it's, there's a lot of absurdity out there. You can't always trust the police. You can't always trust authority. You sure as hell can't trust the judicial system. And uh, that's why you need to protect yourself. So these are the statistics for crime here from a few years back. But this, it's become worse. But as far as for people being aware of home burglaries, things like this, on average, it says there's 2.5 million burglaries each year. All right. Tw only 12% of home invasions are planned in advance. 
House break-ins on average last, last less than 10 minutes. Um, then the one about drug habits I already mentioned. Only 22% of burglars take notice of a neighborhood watch sign when selecting a target. But that's still 22%. So that's over one in five who will avoid a neighborhood if it has a neighborhood watch sign. So that is something to keep in mind if you want to get one of those. Um, but number six, burglaries in the U.S. have dropped 37% since 2008. And that's a good sign. You know, I think overall we're getting better. We have better security systems. And that's an important one. A security system will scare a thief off more often than uh, if you didn't have one, let's say. It says only 7% of burglaries involve violence. Only 17% of homes have a security system. This is a few years back, I believe. That's probably a lot more now. It says burglars are three times more likely to target properties that don't use a security system. And almost two-thirds of burglars are already well acquainted with the people they rob. So that's an important one. When you leave town, things like that, you know, watch out for friends, strangers, neighbors, people who would be willing to take your shit. Only 34% of respondents say that a barking dog would deter them from breaking into a property. And I know that to be a fact. Dogs are all bark and no bite. Almost every dog I've ever encountered. My brother and I used to go collect owl pellets. And I'll be honest, we trespassed quite a bit. It was not probably a comfortable part of the job, but sometimes we'd go to a property, we didn't know who owned it, nobody was home, and all we wanted was the owl pellets from the old barn, which nobody even used anymore. So we'd go in and take them. We'd find barking dogs that would run up to you, rah, 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 and you get out and go, hey, buddy, and they just, they wouldn't do shit. There are dogs that are an exception, but uh, uh, it it's not a deterrent. Um... It says 85% of home invasions are not conducted by professional burglars. Almost two-thirds of burglaries happen during daylight hours. Two-thirds during daylight hours, so everybody's worried at night, but you want to keep an eye out during the day as well. Summer is the most common season. 34% uh, of burglars enter a property through the front door. Almost 48% of all burglars say they would bypass a home if they heard noises coming from inside. Which is another good point if you go on a vacation. Leave a loop track playing or something. Have a small stereo where it has voices. Just have a little bit of bass. Kind of sounds like somebody's talking. It might might help. Um, New Hampshire has the lowest burglary rate. New Mexico has the highest burglary rate. And uh, then it goes on to talk about how most of the worst are in the South except Washington and Nevada. Um, it says once every 26 seconds... A house gets burglared somewhere in the U.S. The average loss from a burglary is about twenty-seven ninety-nine, twenty-eight hundred bucks. Um, the FBI sh data showed that fifty-one percent of all burglaries occurred in the daytime, compared to thirty-two percent at night, which is different from what it said before. <laughs> Most happen in June, and March and April have the next highest burglaries. There's almost three every minute. Okay, here we go with car break-in statistics. Um, reports show that the estimated rate of motor vehicle thefts per 100,000 inhabitants is 237.4. 770,000 nationwide in 2017 alone. Um, most auto burglaries occur during the night. Duh. Parked car in the driveway can deter theft, things like that. And then it goes on to say, install home security, upgrade your locks, and... Don't talk about going on vacation. Something I've always been like, oh, I'm going on a trip. I don't do that anymore. You just never know, especially with a YouTube channel, right? And uh, I don't honestly have much worse stealing. But the point being, I just want to give people that information. And also, I want to know what other people think about vigilante justice. You know, standing up for yourself. You know, it's a very difficult topic because there's so much nuance to it. But I think we should have a right to protect ourselves and our families. I have a very strong feeling towards people who get to, who may put my family in danger. Like, this is where temporary insanity can take over and people can plead it and get away with it in court when they attack someone that threatens their family because you literally just get enraged. If you feel your family is threatened, even if somebody cuts you off or tries to play games on the road with you while you have your family in the car, I mean, it's, you know... 
you don't fuck with my family. That's the point. And uh, so, anyway, that wraps it up for my discussion here today. Thanks for listening. I guess that was kind of a long one, but I've got a serious issue with burglars, with thieves, and uh, I wouldn't hesitate to fuck them up if they get in my space. And uh, I think we should all have an equal right to do so. What do you think? Let me know. Peace out. Talk to you next time.